On behalf of everyone at Wallet Hill School for the Arts, I'd like to welcome you to the second in our series, Spring Art Crush. My name is Garrett Murphy, a graduate of the class of 2008, and I'm delighted to be joined by my co-host for this series, Director of Artistic Studies, Nikki Conrads. Thank you, Garrett. It's so nice to do this again after this wonderful success we had with the Winter Crush series. I'm Nikki Konrads. I'm the Director of Artistic Studies at Walnut Hill. And tonight we'll be speaking to students and faculty about the making of this wonderful virtual opera, The Little Prince. Um, and I am delighted tonight to introduce you to the head of voice, Teresa Winterbloom, and her colleague, Elaine Purcell Smith, who's become a technology wizard this year and I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about that in the next 45 minutes or so. So Teresa and Elaine, welcome and I will let you both take it from here. Hello. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, you guys are doing wonderful things and as I've said, I'm so delighted in, in getting to watch as an audience member the wonderful projects you've been putting out this year in a really a year that's been uh, quite hard for singers because we are, of course, super spreaders of the coronavirus. And uh, and so yet you've been able to do amazing things with singers all over the world. Um, and thanks for being here to talk about The Little Prince. As, as Elaine knows, uh, we worked on this in 2008, when I, my senior year, and I was the businessman and one of the baobabs, and we had just a lot of fun with that. But it's been so interesting to revisit this. And I'm just curious to know a little bit more about the project tonight. So I thought we'd talk about that first before we were joined by some of the students. Now, Teresa, you, you started, I believe, in 2015 when I did as well. So can you give a little bit of background on the sort of the curriculum and the training, your, your whole uh, you know, idea with training young voices? Sure, absolutely. Um... Yes, I've been at Walnut Hill since about 2015, and my philosophy in working with young high school students is that this is really building a foundation of learning for the lifelong singer. And a singer is always curious, always studying, always training. So part of um, our responsibility here is really to engage them in the repertoire and in um, the style of classical singing, and also to teach them skills that will help them as they continue to pursue and train and learn and follow their artistic hearts wherever they lead them. So um, our curriculum repertoire focuses primarily on art song, um, age appropriate, level appropriate art song. And, um, and every year we also do a fully staged opera production. It's usually one act, it's usually in English, and it's usually on the stage in Kiter. And um, every year that I've been here, we've worked really hard at finding something that will be um, not something that's in necessarily the mainstream of the opera rep, because I think it's really important that students um, save those for when they're at a professional uh, level and a level of maturation vocally where they're really ready for that standardized operatic repertoire, but really something that's um, Man a small manageable nugget where every student can have some sort of feature and also practice those skills of walking and singing and talking and acting and telling a story from the beginning to the middle to the end all together. It's like it's like our team sport. It's like our <laughs> it's like our Super Bowl every year. So um, I really look forward to to that aspect of it. So so this year, um, you know, in, in facing what was a challenge, we knew immediately we didn't want to just say, okay, that's it, put the brakes on everything. We said, okay, how can we still use these goals and these skills and this kind of repertoire um, to build our program and to build the skills for the students and keep them really engaged in the learning. So still in fall, we did two um, art song presentations, but we just did it 
in a virtual format. Um, we did a, a sort of Zoom live recital this fall with um, Italian classics, which was really wonderful. And everybody was able to Zoom from wherever they were. Um, and we, we always direct our curriculum towards what that performance goal is. So we really walk them through from the beginning with the how to do your translations, how to do the diction, how to have the style of Italian language in the singing, what is legato, what is bel canto, um, and, and using that to develop technique. So they're working in their lessons, they're working in their classes, they're working in our master classes together, and bit by bit they prepare for, for that recital presentation. Um, and then our next presentation this year, um, we really started to dip our toes in a little bit more. I knew that this year would be really focused on the video aspect because everything that we were doing is suddenly on camera. So um, we've been really addressing those skills. How do you set up a good shot for a self-taped audition? Um, how do you act for the camera that might be different for acting for the stage? How do you speak into the camera for your introduction that might be different if you're making an introduction on stage? Um, and we decided to just go ahead and fully incorporate those video elements. I also like collaborating with other departments, so we invited Matt Seifert from uh, Writing Film and Media Arts to come and talk to us a little bit about making video, making film. And so the students all did their own um, self-directed um, music videos of their art song. And because the repertoire choice is also such an important part of what we're doing, finding what's important, why is this music important, what, what brings value to it, what, what sparks your curiosity about the art form, we also explored specifically for that project repertoire by underrepresented composers and poets, primarily women and people of color. So it was a really exciting program of music and the students um, were partnered up and they each performed in one, uh, learned how to make an audio recording, learned how to, um, um, and then how to become a director where they created their storyboards and their shot lists and how to collaborate with other people that they might want to be involved in, in their story and in their film and they um, produce their own videos. And all of this has been getting us ready bit by bit for this big project that we're doing right now so that our spring opera could be um, basically a virtual opera, a, a, an opera film. And instead of doing a program of you know, 14 two minute songs, we're doing an, an opera of about 14 three to five minute scenes, but we're going to be actually telling the story of the little prince through our virtual film. It's been an incredible process. I'm so proud of all of the students and everything that we've learned in the process. Um, these skills are gonna be applicable in so many ways for them uh, as they come out of this year. So it's it's been really exciting. Uh, and we have not ever wondered what we would be doing next. We just have been rolling along and it's been awesome. That's great. I can't wait to see it. And I'm just curious, Teresa, because I've been lucky to be involved uh, with the voice program in the past, helping out a little bit with the movement. I'm wondering how hard it was to coach scene work and movement on Zoom because everything is reversed. So I'm just wondering how you guys <laughs> went about figuring <laughs> that out. Well, it's really interesting that you say that. So, you know, there were different challenges that that came up that we just sort of said okay well we'll, we'll do this this way so um for part of the year we've had students sort of trickle on to campus throughout the year as campus opened but at the beginning of the year about half were off campus we had several in china we had um one on the west coast we had our sort of wet western and then um uh south carolina so we've had students sort of from all over um and 
Yeah, we zoom and we talk about camera angles and and we figure all of those things out. Um, some of the filming that we've actually done for the opera itself, it's like a house of mirrors where I have them set up their computer to zoom and then you can see the phone and then uh, so I can see their screen for what they're filming and then I can see their setup, but I have to be able to see them past their phone. I even sent them like a little, I made a little model <laughs> with some little dolls to show them where the light should be, where the screen should be, where all the different things should be so that I can talk them through the scene as, um, as I'm sort of directing the scene and filming it remotely. And then of course, in person, we've been able to use a, uh, an art gallery that was being used for, for the weaving studio that's not being used right now. And we were able to set up um, our equipment with green screens and, and lights and all of those things. And every day we go into film, we set everything up. It's like our own little film studio, we break it all down. Um, but, uh, it's been great and it and it it really is interesting there's a different style of acting for film because the eyes read so much and where movement might be much broader and obviously much more distance from point A to point B as you're telling a story physically on stage it's all very condensed for film but it's actually been an awesome opportunity to work with the students on being expressive with their voices for their audio recordings I say I want to hear you smile if there's something you're singing about that you're smiling about I want to hear the smile in your voice I want to hear your eyes get sad um, even if I can't see them and then when they lip sync for the for the opera for the final production um, they they can feel those emotions again and and then they're working with those emotions on their faces and we can tell you know we've, we've even shown someone in the back okay look see here your eyes stopped and here your eyes sparkled and we want to keep the sparkle in your eyes the whole time and um and they're really their acting skills have really um just blossomed in this new format because of that kind of awareness of how impactful um the sound and the expression through the eyes is and I know that that is something that reads through the back of the house when they're on stage again, so I know that will serve them well it's been it's been it's, it's a huge cry from uh, the old park and bark method of. <laughs> singing. Uh, and, and I think you know our, our students are going to really just be so much better for it and Elaine you've introduced all sorts of technology for the the sound aspect of this because of course opera is a lot about the singing and it's hard sometimes to get that to translate how did you how are you sort of making this all happen so you know a year ago the challenge for me was <clears throat> how will i make beautiful tracks uh that are beautiful piano recordings so that the students have um gorgeous tracks so that they can sing they can sing at home at the uh, and um, so the challenge for me was what was the best way for me to record and I it came I came full circle back to my experience with MIDI and MIDI is musical instrument digital interface which connects a keyboard to um, a computer and reads the digital information so in the 90s I was creating uh, music notation with finale and uh, a year ago, I went back to using MIDI to create the audio tracks. So I chose to use GarageBand because I had an in-house uh, tutor right here with my 18-year-old. So I had my 18-year-old training me and teaching me. And uh, from there, over the months, uh, my, my technique has improved. So what we did with the opera was um, created piano tracks uh, and then their melody tracks, different tempos, and we would rehearse online. And then uh, the challenge, of course, is with uh, finale, finales or large ensemble numbers. How would we rehearse online? How can we practice? So with that, uh, we used several techniques. Uh, one we did over Zoom, where we would do small groups. We did a lot of chanting online together to get the rhythmic precision and the cutoffs and which vowel choices we would use. And I tried to keep the students engaged because it is a challenge to hold a music rehearsal over Zoom when there is, um, you know, the lag or the latency issue. So uh, it was really a challenge for me to keep the students uh, involved, uh, enjoying this experience and and moving forward with learning their music. When the students came back to campus, we had the opportunity to start using SoundJack which is uh, a platform where both um, both in musicians are in two different areas 
uh, and they have this low latency platform where they're actually making music together live, uh, low latency with no lag, no, no syncing issues. So we were able to do that at Walnut Hill. Oh. And uh, and that was an, a really good step forward to have that experience on campus and definitely something we'll be using in the future. Uh, and then uh, the other good news was uh, at the beginning of quarter four, the students came back to campus and we were able to have our first outdoor in-person rehearsal. So we did that on the upper patio uh, at Delbridge and uh, we had eight students with us. So that was a great pleasure to rehearse the same numbers which we had already been rehearsing online. The other thing I wanted to add is yeah. uh, coming back to MIDI. Just because of the, the timing and everything, we have chosen to create a MIDI orchestra. So this is a premiere here at Walnut Hill to have a MIDI orchestra. And we've engaged the services of Lynn Cow, who is a pianist, conductor, voice coach, and she's creating the orchestra for us. So I it's a great opportunity for the students to learn what MIDI can do with these orchestral sounds. And also it, it creates this unearthly sound, which I think goes so beautiful, beautifully with the story of Little Prince, which is another universe, uh, a, a world maybe we don't know. And uh, the sounds are just absolutely stunning with the MIDI orchestra. Well, that's exciting. I'm looking forward to hearing it. And, you know, I think one of the, one of the things that makes this piece so really powerful is its use of orchestral colors. And I think it's, it's you're right, there's a sort of an ethereal quality to some of the MIDI sounds that can be produced. So I'm, I'm curious for, from both of you, you know, these are skills that are absolutely, were not taught in the conservatory when, when everybody was trained. And I'm just curious, like, you know, before we bring on the, the students, you know, what, what are a few things that you've just, obviously we've talked about some things you've acquired, but how do you think this is gonna impact the sort of training going forward? Well, I think that's a, a really great question. One thing I wanna say is that with Elaine's um, very quick uh, development of expertise in this area, it's been wonderful to have these piano tracks available for the students throughout the year, just even on their solo repertoire. She makes these beautiful piano tracks. She's still able to coach with them. And part of what she does with them when she coaches with them is she'll say, you know, do you need more time here? Where would you like a breath? She can adjust the tempo. She can change the key. She can do all kinds of little adjustments with them. And it brings a different kind of awareness to the student in that collaborative conversation of what do I need musically? Because I can't just count on my pianist to catch me and and follow me and fix things live in the moment they really have to take responsibility for that music making and how to communicate what they need collaboratively so that is definitely a skill that will continue and i also think it's just a useful resource for them to be able to have those piano tracks to rehearse with i mean in the past there was something that felt very limiting about having to having to rehearse with a piano track um, and, and obviously we're all looking forward to being able to make live music with that spontaneity and heart again in, in person, but, but there is a, a benefit in the preparation and the rehearsal and just the, the, the study of the music that I have found to be really useful for the students and I've seen it um, really enhance their musicianship and their artistry throughout the year in a really special way. So I'm, I'm hoping that's something that, that we'll keep. Um, and, and I also think, like I said, some of the acting skills, some of the, the, the camera technique that we've been using um, and self-taping. I don't think self-taping is going away. It's been alive and well in the, in the theater world for a long time, but I definitely think that, you know, many voice competitions and even college auditions, I think it'll be interesting to see how things change in the future, but being able to make a good self-tape with the equipment that you have um, to make sure that the shot is set up well, that you sing beautifully and that you capture the sound in the way that's most authentic um, at, at a, just a very basic level um, is something that that they'll use for a very long time. And some of them did invest in some, you know, a microphone to help. And and that equipment is something that they'll be able to use throughout their, their college conservatory days um, for lessons and, and other auditions and things. So um, there is, you know, technology isn't going away. We're so fortunate that even just the smartphone can do so much at such a high level. Yeah. Um, 
So we'll definitely keep in incorporating it. And I just wanted to say something about just Rachel Portman, the, the composer of The Little Prince. One of the reasons we chose The Little Prince was because you know, Rachel Portman is um, a female composer and a uh, very prolific and uh, just astoundingly beautiful film composer with a vast amount of film scoring um, to her name. And it is a very evocative score. Um, it's just, it's beautiful. It, it, it feels um, like you can feel the setting in, in the sound of the music. And so it's so nice as the orchestra tracks are starting to come in, we've been working with the piano tracks and now the orchestra is coming in and suddenly it, it's like, oh, it feels like what we're picturing it to be in, in our minds. There's this very illustrative, very cinematic quality to the music that I think makes it just that much more appropriate that this is the story that we chose for this year. And then thematically, this idea of, you know, one of the main themes is anything essential is invisible to the eye. And I think one thing that we've all realized this year is just how much we need each other and how much we need to be making music together. And um, and this this feeling of, of creating something and really caring deeply for something in the process. Um, just, I don't know, the opera really speaks to that and it feels just very appropriate for the year. Well, I think we're both, I mean, I, I know I speak for Nikki and the rest of us at the school when I say we're really, are so lucky to have you and, and your leadership and vision in making this project uh, what we're looking forward to seeing in this next hour here on the YouTube channel. Um, I wonder if maybe this might be a moment to bring in the students. I think uh, Nikki and I will go away if we want to bring folks in. Do you want to introduce them? Sure. Um, so we have, let's see, who shall we start with? So we have um, Olivia Gann, who is a junior, and she's joining us from Beijing. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hello. And Olivia... So yeah, tell us what year you are and how long you've been here. Yeah, this is my third year at Walnut Hill, so I am a junior voice. And um, I'm currently Zooming from Beijing. It's um, quite a beautiful day out here. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> delighted to be here. Thank you for joining us. And next we have Alexandra Polakoff. Hello, I'm Alexandra. Um, I'm from South Carolina. I'm a senior at Walnut Hill and I'm also remote. I'm a remote student. Wonderful. And we have Ava Paul. Hi everyone, I'm Ava. I'm also a senior. Um, I'm from Colorado, but I'm really happy to be back on campus for this quarter. So you just came to campus just for the start of quarter four. So sort of one of our last one of our last voice majors that could possibly join us in person. So we didn't get all of them back, but close, um, which is great to have you. And Sam D'Amico. Hi, um, I'm Sam D'Amico. I'm a junior voice and bassoon major and I'm from Portland, Maine. Yeah, and I'm here on campus, which is very nice. Wonderful. And we have Ravi Nguyen. Hi, my name is Ravi Nguyen. Uh, this is my first year at Walnut Hill. Uh, I'm a sophomore and I'm from Massachusetts and I'm living on campus. Wonderful. So we're so thank you so much for joining us tonight. So all of you have been really busy. We've been doing a lot of filming over the last week in particular. Um, our project began with learning the music, recording the audio for the music, scene by scene, bit by bit, um, layering all of those things in. And as the music became synced up with Ms. Purcell's piano tracks after she worked on that, then we've begun filming when quarter four began. And after we capture all the footage, then the editing happens, um, editing our green screen footage um, together with the backgrounds and things that our editors are working on. And um, it'll be really exciting to have the big reveal very soon to show what we've been working on. So um, let's see, who shall we talk with first? Ms. Purcell, would you like to talk a little bit about Soundjack a little bit? Yeah, let's talk about Soundjack. So uh, I mentioned earlier, this was this is a platform that we're using at Walnut Hill. We have it set up in Elliot A, Elliot B, and Amelia. 
And Sam was one of the first students to do it with me. Our jazz program has been using SoundJack uh, since the fall, but this was our first time for singing. And so we had a lot of technical things to learn. Um, Sam was the first student to come in. It took us a while to get the setup going in both rooms so that we would be uh, separated from each other. But Sam, how was it when we finally got things going? Yeah, it was honestly incredible. I mean, I really missed like performing and just like playing with someone else, especially as like a vocalist, but also a wind player. It is really like the worst of this whole pandemic because I can't really perform anywhere. So I've kind of just been stuck in my room performing by myself, stuff like that. And so when we finally got to do Soundjack, I was so excited because I knew it would give us, well, it wouldn't be the same as like getting to be in the same room and like play off each other. Like I would still get to play with someone and sing with someone, which was incredible. So obviously after the learning curve of learning how to set everything up and connecting all the wires and cables to everything, it was just awesome to like, I remember the first time I put the headphones on just to like test out to see if I could hear Miss Purcell playing in the piano in the other room, like down the hall. And it was just crazy because I could just hear her like piano, like at the exact same time as she was playing and like no latency, no issues like that. And I, I was able to like sing with her and we could actually like fully practice like the pieces and practice all of the stuff that this past year, it's been so difficult getting to do, which is really you nice. Did such a great job. Together. You had yeah. you had already prepared the opening pilot prologue. Mm -hmm. We just once we got things rolling, we just ran the prologue. Mm -hmm. We just ran it. Yeah, and it, it made we it ran so it again. <laughs> yeah, it made it so easy also to like for when we were recording all of the tracks for the opera. Obviously, we had to use like the piano like accompaniment tracks, and it just made it so much easier for us to like. Well, for Miss Purcell to so that you could like know exactly where to like slow things down and speed up things, make things softer and louder, stuff like that. It was just it was so much more easy to be together and really play off each other, even when in those cases like we couldn't play off each other. We still had that experience of getting to, which is awesome. So let's see. So for the students that have been remote this year, um, have still not been able to get together and sing together, um, still not been able to um, just be in the same space. And it's been challenging, but we've been able to do our lessons remotely and still make a lot of progress in that way and work in that way. Um, Alex, so for you, so Alex is playing the part of the Rose, um, who is uh, what the little prince cares most for in all of the universe. And um, and Alex is is remote, and so we can't have the little prince and Alex in the same scene together. We can't have the little prince and our lamplighter Olivia in the same scene together. So Alex, tell a little bit about how we um, how we've managed to grab your footage for which is a, a big scene, a long scene for the rose. Tell a little bit about everything that went into <laughs> into that costumes, all of it. Yes, so I've certainly learned how to make the best of the situation. <laughs> um, so we've had a few sessions where I will stand in front of the green screen and um, my mother will help me film. And um, we have all this lighting everywhere. Um, <laughs> and it's about it takes about two hours um, every session and to the side, I'll have um, a Zoom session going with Miss Bloom. <laughs> That's how we film it. <laughs> yeah, so we we sent to our remote students. So we have three students in China. Um, out of the kindness and generosity of her heart, our international parent rep, who was actually a voice major's parent, Eddie Eddie Cho's mom, Kathy Song, sent um, green and blue screens to our three students in China from a vendor in China so that we knew it could get to them in time. And we had our costumer prioritize the international costumes first. So she made the international costumes first and sent them way back in March. So we were sure that they would get to them in time to be filming. So what they had to have in order to film was a costume, uh, a green screen and and their music. And um, and then the next priority was our two remaining um, 
remote students, one in Indiana and one in South Carolina. And so we got the, 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 all those things sent and poor Alex and her mom, and you even roped your brother in who was preparing for the LSAT. <laughs> we had, it was a whole family affair. She moved all the furniture in her house at least six different times. I don't know how many lights and things were rigged up. We finally got it set up. We had one mammoth two and a half hour long filming session, <laughs> plus the stuff that you had done on your own. So it's been, uh, it's been extraordinary and it'll be, re it's, it's magic. It's movie magic. What's going to happen to make that all come together. Um, and, um, and Ms. Purcell, I know you were going to talk to Olivia about something in particular. Do you want to take the next one? Well, I, you know, I wanted to ask her about filming, how, how her experience was filming um, green screen at her house with her parent helping. <laughs> yeah. So I would say it's very difficult at the start to, know how to use a green screen like i need to be um very concentrated i need to be an actor and a translator at the same time because i need to um, communicate with my dad which is my helper in mandarin so um things get a little complicated and it took more time i believe than others and we just like alex said we had like at least three different life sources shining on me at different angles in order to make it work and i'm so delighted to have our um, wolfma friend lisa to help us at the same time with miss bloom and to direct my scene and also my dad was really happy to be a part of this process as well so yeah it's quite difficult but we enjoyed it <laughs> we've been very grateful for all the additional help and that's an excellent segue because i did want a chance to talk about all of our collaborators that have been helping so not only all of the parents and helpers of our five or more students but also um i've invited um two wufma students so lisa Krestyaninova, who is a sophomore wufma major and she is on campus from and she's from russia and then we have kiha an who is a sophomore wufma student who is in korea and he actually thought he was going to be on campus but he's he's still in korea for quarter four so he's been helping us remotely as well by doing um a lot of the backgrounds and some of the 3d animation and many of the effects that you're going to see throughout the the show so with their expertise in just understanding how to how to work the camera we've also gotten some advice um, from some of the faculty and i've contracted an outside um um, collaborator who is a, a film animator who is also working with us. So just learning how to light the green screen, how to capture the best shot. And then the setup is really the hardest part. Like once we get going, once the light is right on the screen, on the faces, nothing's going outside of the screen. We get everything the way that it needs to. The, the shoot itself is, is really straightforward, but it definitely takes many hands. Um, and so we've been very grateful for all of that help and, um, it's been it's been also wonderful just to work with students outside of our program as well because it just feels very community um, collaborative. It's been great. Robbie, would you like to say something about um, our first uh, in person rehearsal outside after yeah. months of being completely remote? Yeah. So um, back in um, March 2020, um, I was preparing for a big performance. And then COVID hit and everything shut down. And there was a whole year, just a, like a whole year where I didn't get to perform with the actual people. I didn't get to sing in an ensemble. And in March, 2021, uh, we had been working on the opera, working on ensemble numbers for us in that time. It meant that we were rehearsing in our rooms with like solo piano tracks and then recording in, just like singing it by herself it's kind of sad but then we send them all in to miss Purcell and she would put them all together but um i remember one day it was a tuesday um miss Purcell she invited me and four other students to work on the baobab ensemble outside and i showed up i was really excited to sing with people um we were all masked and we were distancing and Miss Purcell came with this little toy keyboard. She was being very resourceful. And it was, I, I didn't know what to expect, but um, she plunked out our notes and we all started singing together. And as soon as we started singing together, it was like relearning how to sing with people. It was so magical. 
and we sang for like an hour we rehearsed and i think every one of us students we left with a smile on our face very happy and i remember eating dinner with two other fellow students and every five minutes i'd be like guys that was so fun wasn't it and then another five minutes go by and i'd say it again and they'd be like yeah yeah that was awesome but it was a lot of fun and then in quarter that was quarter three in quarter four um we had like maybe four more students and ava joined us um she came from colorado uh to be on campus and we had like eight or nine people singing together we were singing a finale a uh, finale two and the water ensemble and it was it was fun miss bloom and miss purcell were there and it was just really awesome because we hadn't been singing with each other for so long Thank you, Ravi. And so Ava, Ava's been helping um, uh, this week with uh, some extra filming as well. She's been another sort of assistant director of photography. I've had a couple of uh, voice majors come and help um, capture some of our shots, which has been great. And, and Ava's had this experience of being remote um, and then coming back and being in person. So, um, what has it been like to sort of watch that process develop um, from the beginning, I guess, starting with just rehearsing it in this remote format and then getting to where we're getting closer and closer to um, to completion? Yeah, it's it's definitely been an interesting process. Um, when it first started out, I feel like it seemed very individual, um, like researching the show and learning and practicing our music and then eventually figuring out how to, you know, mix sound and become our own videographers and audio engineers, um, like in order to record audio and that was done all separate and it felt kind of disconnected. Um, but again, those are skills I'm going to be able to implement through the rest of my singing career, which is something I'm very grateful for. But the first time I heard a rough cut of our finale and all the voices were together, I was just like in shock because I realized like we had all been working on the same things together this entire time. And even though like I didn't see the process in a traditional sense, it, it's just really special knowing that like, you know, everyone's in the same boat as me and we all care about it as much as I do. And that's just, it was very cool. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's definitely evolved since I've returned to campus this past quarter because you know, being in front of a green screen for the first time is so awkward and it's so exposed. And what do I do with my hands? <laughs> I don't know. I still don't know. Um, but yeah, it's it's an adjustment for sure. But everything we've been working on has just connected over the past couple months and is just invigorating, especially with like helping with filming and seeing some of these shots come out. I just I can't tell you how many times I've gotten goosebumps just like knowing I'm just so excited and everything we've been working on has just connected and come together. And it's, it's, it's just so cool. Yeah, <laughs> I think, I think one thing that we, we have been very clear about acknowledging all year is we're not trying to do what we normally do in a different way. We've been really saying we're doing something different because this is, this is what we're doing. We're going to make a film of an opera and none of us have ever done that before. And so, you know, we don't really know what we have until it's all together and we see this how it finally comes together and we can each only be responsible for our own part and in truth that's what it is whenever we are making music together and putting on a stage production together we're, we're responsible for our own part we bring that to the table what we haven't been able to have is see sort of you know make the cake all together with all of our ingredients at the same time and all smell the same delicious cake baking at the same time we haven't been able to have that experience of seeing it come together you still only have your own individual experience and it's going to be this big reveal for all of you as it is for all of the audience to be what it finally is because there are so many more um more elements and i know that's been one of the challenges this year because for your um new england conservatory youth chorale the ensemble that you're all a part of as part of walnut hill it's been the same thing you've been making music together but separately and in your solo repertoire you're making music 
together, but separately. Um, but I love that you said that you've been doing this together all along. Sometimes we put so much pressure on ourselves that you're responsible for all of the things and that you realize that you're actually all working towards this one thing and how much value you each bring individually to the larger whole. Um, so it will be just thrilling to premiere this very, very soon. Um, I don't know. What else do we have? I think it's been clear throughout these past months how much Mrs. Bloom and I absolutely love this opera. We love the music. We are so moved by this music and we have wanted to share this music with our students. We wanted to share it with you all. We wanted you to find the joy of this music, the messages, the life lessons that are in The Little Prince. Um, the cautionary tales that are in, that are you, that can be found in Little Prince, and uh, I know it's been a journey for each one of you, going through this, learning it, and uh, understanding the story, and um, understanding of what Miss Portman has done with the librettist on the original story. So for me, it's been a joy sharing this with you all, and. Um, I want to thank you all for that. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Sam, I also did you have something you wanted to say? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say on that, it reminds me of soon you all see um, in the Water Ensemble, one of the major messages of the show is that like eyes are blind, look only with the heart. And it really, our whole filming process and this whole process of the opera was really like that because like I couldn't see what everyone was doing all the time. Like we couldn't really put it all together. Like, in front of each other it was more so we were putting it on our own and it's just remembering like obviously we couldn't see each other but in the end like we're all together we all made this like giant product and even though we couldn't like i couldn't see it, like the whole process for olivia or for ava um i could still just remember like even though i can't see those things i can know like deep down we're all like doing the same thing and we're all working together for this amazing opera, which is a really nice tie into one of the major messages. And I want to just say one more thing, just to give um, a credit to the composer, Rachel Portman. She very graciously met with Ms. Purcell and I at the beginning of the process. We reached out to her to ask if she would give us permission to do her work. Um, the original opera is about two and a half hours long, and we knew that that was going to be beyond the scope and scale of what we'd be able to um, accomplish you know, in this format. And she very graciously agreed to allow um, me to to edit it and what we've done for our program is basically selections from where we can still tell the whole story um, and feature most of the major characters um, and be really true to the opera we didn't change any music but we did we did cut it and we used um, the libretto from Nicholas Wright, we uh, used the text that he used in the opera to create transitions and narrations to get us from scene to scene, so that our program is about 45 minutes long. And, um, and it, it's, it really is just such a beautiful story. And every time I'm in the studio filming with you all, I mean, Ava was with me today and I started crying when we were filming one of the scenes because it's just so beautiful. Uh, the music is beautiful. The acting is beautiful. The message is beautiful. And you students are beautiful. You've been working so hard. Um, and it's been really exciting because it's not, it's hard work, but it doesn't feel like drudgery. I feel that you always bring joy and enthusiasm to your work every day that you come, um, you're genuinely curious about it. You're genuinely interested in it. You're hungry for it. Um, and your passion is very clear in the quality of the work that you do and that you bring to the process, which which makes it so enjoyable for Ms. Purcell and I. We just feel very lucky to um, to be working with all of you. So thank you all for all of your hard work. And we're so excited to share this, this project with our audience. Well, thank you so much uh, to our students, Sam, Olivia, Ava, Ravi, and Alex, and our faculty members who have been seeing this project all the way through that we're about to witness, uh, Teresa Winter Bloom uh, and Elaine Smith Purcell for talking with us tonight about the making of The Little Prince, which will air directly after this on our YouTube channel. I would also like to thank all of you for joining us tonight for the second in our Spring Crush series. 
I invite you to tune in on Thursday, May 27th at 7 p.m. for an evening with the theater department, where we will be joined by department head Joe Cabral, faculty members Gina Fiore and Brian Dillon, and the senior theater majors as we discuss their upcoming production of The World Goes Round, the songs of Candor and Ebb. In the meantime, we hope you will stay with us for the premiere of The Little Prince at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Thank you.